Hi guys, it's me again, Shirley May and Swalog. And we're done with rule number um, rule number 5 to 8. So let's proceed to rule number 9 of um, the softball game, which is the dead ball and ball and dead ball to ball and play. So in the rule number 9, section 1, the ball is dead. The ball is dead and not in play in the following circumstances when the ball is batted illegally. When the batter steps from one box to another when the pitcher is for SP only taking the signal or appears to be taking the signal from the pitcher's plate for SP steps on the pitching plate. When no pitch is declared, when a pitch ball touches any part of the batter's person or closing whether the ball is struck at or not. When the offensive when a foul fly ball is not caught, when the offensive team causes interference, when a fair batted ball strikes an umpire or runner before touching a fielder including the pitcher, before passing a fielder other than the pitcher without being touched, or after passing a fielder excluding the pitcher and in the umpire's judgment another fielder had a chance chance to make an out. When the ball is outside when the ball is outside the established playing limits of the playing area, when an accident to a batter runner or runner prevents him from proceeding to be to the awarded base, um, for SP when the batter bans or chops the pitch ball, for FP when a wild pitch or passed ball goes under, over or through the backstop, when the umpire calls time, when a runner runs bases in reverse order or off baseline. While not attempting to advance either to confuse the fielders or to make a travesty of the game. When the coach near third base runs in the direction of home plate. When one or more members of the offensive team stands or collect. When a 4 FP, when a runner fails to keep contact with the base to which he is entitled. For SP, when a runner fails to keep contact with the base to which he is entitled. And for SP, after each strike or ball, when a black ball is declared, when a batter enters the batter's box with or uses an altered bat, when a batter enters the batter's box with or uses an illegal bat, when, when with less than two out and runner on first base, a fielder intentionally drops a fair fly ball. When a fielder carries a live ball into Dead ball territory when time has been has been cold and defensive player is making an appeal. When the batter fails to enter the batter's box within 10 seconds after the umpire calls play ball. When any person other than a team member enters the playing field and creates interference. When the batter runner steps back toward home plate to avoid or delay a tag or by a fielder. When an offensive team member delib deliberately erases the lights of the batter's box. When a batter is issued an intentional base on balls. On balls. When a strike is called on the batter for stepping out of the batter's box and delaying the game. Section 2. The ball is in play. The ball is in play in the following circumstances. At the start of the game and each half inning when the pitcher has been the ball while standing in. Um, when the infield fly rule is enforced. When a thrown ball goes past a fielder and remains in playable territory when a fair ball strikes an umpire or runner on fair ground after when a fair ball strikes an umpire on foul ground when the runners have reached the bases to which they are entitled when runner is called out for passing a proceeding runner when no play is being made on an on an obstructed runner the ball shall remain alive until the player play is over when a fair play, fair ball is legally batted, when a runner must return in reverse order, when a runner acquires the right to a base, when base is dislodged while runners are progressing around the bases, when a runner runs more than 0.91 meter or 3 feet from his base path in regular or reverse order to avoid being touched by the ball in the hand of a fielder, when a runner is tagged or forced out, when the umpire calls the runner out or for failure to return and touch the base when play is resumed after a suspension or no suspension of play, when live ball appeal play is legally being made, when the batter hits the ball, when live ball strikes a photographer, groundskeeper, policeman, extra assigned to the game, when fly ball has been legally caught, when a thrown ball strikes an offensive player, when a thrown ball strikes an umpire. 
whenever the ball is not dead, when a thrown ball accidentally strikes a coach. For FP, when a ball has been called on the batter and when, our, when four balls have been called but the batter may not be put out before they reaches first base. For FP again, when a strike has been called on the batter and when the three strikes have been called on the batter. For FP, when a foul tip has been legally caused. For SP, as long as there is a play as a result of the hit by the batter. F for FP, when the ball slips from a pitcher's hand during his wind up or during the back swing. When a runner is called out for getting a running start from a base on any fly ball. When a runner abandons a base, does not attempt to advance to the next base, enters his team area or leaves the field of play and is called out. For SP, the ball remains live until the umpire calls time. This should be done when the ball is held by a player in the infield and in the opinion of the umpire, all play has ceased. Section 3, Delayed Dead Ball There are five situations when a violation of the rule occurs. An umpire recognizes it and the ball remains live until the conclusion of the play. These situations are an illegal pitch, catcher's obstruction for FP, plate umpire interference, obstruction, detached equipment, contacting a thrown ball, a pitch ball, or a fair batted ball. Let's proceed to rule number 10, umpires. Section 1, power and duties. The umpires are the representative of the, of the league or organization by which they have been assigned to a particular game and as such are authorized and required to enforce each section of these rules. They have the power to order a player, coach, captain, or manager to do or omit to do any act which, in their judgment, is necessary to give force and effect to one or all of these rules and to inflict penalties as they in prescribed. The plate umpire shall have the authority to make decisions in any situations not specifically covered in the rules. General information for umpires. The umpire shall not be a member of either, of either team, examples player, coach, manager, officer, officer, scorer, or sponsor. The umpire should be sure of the date, time, and place for the game and should arrive at playing field 20-30 minutes ahead of time start the game on time and leave the field when the game is over. The male and female umpire must wear a powder blue long or short sleeved shirt, dark navy blue socks, dark navy blue slacks, dark navy blue cup with white and blue trimmed ISF letters in the front, dark navy blue ball bag or plate for plate only, or plate only, dark navy blue jacket and or sweater, black shoes and belt, a white t-shirt worn under the powder blue shirt umpires must not wear exposed jewelry that may pose hazard the plate umpire in fast pitch must wear a black face mask black or tan padding and black throat protector in the body protector and shin guards with knee protection an extended wire protector may be worn in lieu of a throat protector in the mask the umpire should introduce themselves to the captains managers and scorers the umpire should inspect the playing field boundaries, equipment, and clarify all ground rules to both teams and their coaches. Each umpire shall have the power to make decisions and violations committed any time during playing time or during suspension of play until the game is over. An umpire may consult his associate at any time. However, the final decision shall rest with the umpire whose exclusive authority it was to make decision and who requested the opinion to the other. In order to define the respective duties, the umpire judging balls and strikes shall be designated as the plate umpire, the umpire judging the base decisions as the base umpire. The plate umpire or base umpire shall have equal authority to call a runner out for leaving a base too soon, call time for suspension of play, remove or eject a player, coach or manager from the game for violation of rules, Call all illegal pitches, determine and call an infield play. The umpire, the umpire ra shall declare the batter or runner out without waiting for an appeal for such decision in all cases where such player is retired in accordance with these rules. Umpire shall not penalize a team for infraction of a rule when opposing, imposing the penalty would be to the advantage of the offending team 
failure of umpires to adhere to Rule 10 shall be grounds for protest. These are guidelines for umpires. Section 2. The Plate Umpire Shall take a position in back of the catcher. He shall have full charge of and be responsible for the proper conduct of the game. Shall call all balls and strikes. Shall by agreement and in cooperation with the base umpire call plays, hit balls, fair or foul, legal or illegal cost balls on plays that would necessitate necessitate the base umpire leaving the infield the plate umpire shall assume the duties normally required of the base umpire shall determine and declare whether a batter bans or chops a ball a batter a batted ball touches the person or closing of the batter shall render these decisions when required to do so shall determine when a game is forfeited shall assume all duties when assigned as a single umpire to a game Section 3. The base umpire shall take such positions on the playing field as required in accordance with the, rele the relevant umpire systems shall assist the plate umpire in every way to enforce the rules of the game. Responsib responsibility Section 4. Responsibilities of a single umpire. If only one umpire is assigned, his duties and jurisdiction shall extend to all points. The umpire shall start... The umpire's starting position for each pitch shall be from behind home plate. On each batted ball or play that develops, the umpire shall move out from behind the plate and into the infield to obtain the best position for any play and develops. Section 5. Change of umpires. Umpires cannot be changed during a game by the consent of the opposing, opposing teams unless an umpire is, un is incapacitated by injury or illness. Section 6. Umpire's Judgment There shall be no appeal, appeal from any decision of any umpire on the grounds that he was not correct in his conclusion as to whether ba a batted ball was fair or foul, a runner safe or out, a pitch ball a strike or ball or a on play in involving accuracy of judgment. Kasi sa, siya lang talaga yung magkapag-judge. Under no circumstances shall any umpire seek to reverse a decision made by his associates nor shall any umpires criticize or interfere with the duties of his associates unless asked to do so by him. The umpires in consultation may rectify, rectify any situation in which the reversal of an umpire's decision or a delayed call by an umpire places a battle runner or runner in, in jeopardy or places the defensive team at, at disadvantage. Section 7. Signals to indicate that play shall begin or be resumed the umpire shall call play ball a strike shall be indicated by raising the right hand upward indicating the number of strikes by the fingers and the same time calling strike to indicate a ball um a ball no arm signal is used to indicate the total count of balls and strikes the balls are called first to indicate a foul to indicate a fair ball to indicate a better or runner out, the umpire shall raise the right hand upward above the right shoulder with his fist closed to indicate a better or runner out. The umpire shall raise the right hand upward above the right shoulder with his fist closed, closed to indicate what, that a player is safe. The umpire shall extend both arms horizontally to the side of the body to indicate suspension of play. The umpire shall call time and at the same time extend both arms above the head. To indicate a delayed dead ball, the umpire shall extend the left arm horizontally with fist closed. To indicate a trap ball, the umpire shall extend both arms horizontally to the side of the body with palms towards the ground. To indicate a ground rule double, the umpire shall extend the right hand above the head and at the same time indicate with two fingers the two numbers of base awarded. To indicate an infield fly, the umpire shall call infield fly. If fair, the batter is out. The umpire shall extend one arm above the head. To indicate not to pitch, the umpire should raise one hand with the palm facing the pitcher. No pitch shall be declared. Section 8. Suspension of play. An umpire may suspend play when in his judgment conditions justify such action play shall sus be suspended whenever the plate umpire leaves his position to brush the plate or to perform other duties not directly connected with the calling of plays 
The umpire shall be sus shall suspend play whenever a batter or pitcher steps out of position for a legitimate per reason. An umpire shall not call time after pitcher has started the wind up. An umpire shall not call time while any play is in progress. In case of injury, except the umpire's judgment when a serious injury, umpire shall not suspend play at the request of players, coaches, or managers until all action in progress by either team has been completed. For SP, when in the opinion of an umpire, all immediate play is apparently completed time should be called. Rule 11, Protest Section 1, protests that will not be received or considered if they are based solely on a decision involving the accuracy of judgment on the part of an umpire or if the team judge lodging the protest won the game. Examples of protests that will not be considered are whether a batted ball was fair or foul, whether a runner was safe or out, whether a pitch ball was a strike or a ball, whether a pitch was legal or illegal, whether a runner did or did not touch a base, whether a runner left the base too soon on a cost fly ball, whether a fly ball was or was not cost legally, whether it was or was not not in field fly, whether there was or was not an interference, whether there was or was not an obstruction, or whether a player or live ball did not or did enter a dead ball area or touch some object or person in that dead ball area. Whether a batted ball did or did not clear the fence in flight. Whether the field is fit to continue or resume a play. Whether there is sufficient light to continue to play and any other matter involving only the accuracy of the umpire's judgment. Section 2. Protest that will be received. Protest that shall be received and considered included include matters of the following types misinterpretation of a playing rule failure of an umpire to apply the correct rule to given situation failure to impose the correct penalty for a given violation eligibility of a team roster member section 3 protest involving judgment and interpretation of rule protest may involve both a matter of judgment and interpretation of a rule an example of a situation of this type follows with one out and the runners on second third bases the batter flied out the runner on third tag up after the catch the player on the second did not the runner on third crossed the plate before the ball was played at second base for the third out the umpire did not allow the run to score the questions as to whether the runner left their bases before the catch and whether the play at second was made before the player on third crossed the plate are solely matters of judgment and are not protestable the failure of the umpire to allow the run to score was a misinterpretation of a playing rule and was a proper subject for protest. Section 4. Notification of Intent to Lodge Protest Not the notification of intent to protest must be made immediately before the next pitch. The manager or acting manager of the protesting team shall immediately notify the plate umpire that the game is being continued under protest. The plate umpire shall in turn notify the opposing manager and official scorekeeper. All interested parties shall take notice of the conditions surrounding the making of the decision that will lead in the correct determination of the issue. Section 5. Time to lodge an official protest. The official written protest must be filed within a reasonable time in the absence of a league or tournament rule fixing the time limit for filing a, filing a protest a protest should be considered if filed within a reasonable time depending upon the nature of the case and the difficulty for obtaining the information on which to base the protest within 48 hours after the scheduled time of the contest is generally considered a reasonable time section 6 Information required for written protest. The formal written protest should contain the following information, the date, time, and place of the game, the names of the umpires and scorers, the rule and section of the official rules or local rules under which the protest is made, the decision and conditions surrounding the making of the decision, and all essential, essential facts involved in the matter protested. Section 7. Um, Result of 
protest. The decision made on a protested game must result in one of the following. The protest is found invalid in the game when a protest is allowed for misinterpre misinterpretation of playing rule. The game is replayed from the point at which the incorrect decision was made with the decision corrected. When a protest for an eligibility of a team roster member is allowed, the game shall be forfeited by the offending team. Next, let's proceed to rule number 12, which is the scoring, the last rule of um, softball game. Section 1, the official scorer shall keep records of each game as outlined and the following rules shall have the sole authority to make all decisions involving judgment. For example, it is the scorer's responsibility to determine whether a batter's advance to first base is the result of a, play, a hit or an error. However, a scorer shall not make a decision which conflicts with the official playing rules or with an umpire's decision. Excuse me. <laughs> Section 2, the box score. Each player's name and the position or positions to be played shall be listed in the order in which he batted or would have batted unless the player is legally substituted, ejected, or removed from the game or the game and before his turn at bat. A put out is credited to the catcher when a third strike is called for SP when the batter bans or chops the ball downward when the batter fails to bat in correct order when the batter interferes with the catcher for SP when the batter hits a third strike foul ball when the batter is called out for batting illegally for FP when the batter is called out for an attempted bat on the third strike when the batter is declared out for using an illegal batter or altered bat when the batter called out for changing batter's backs section 3 base hits shall not be recorded a base hit shall not be scored in the following cases when a runner is forced out by a batted ball or would have been forced out except a fielding error when a player fielding a batted ball retires a preceding runner with ordinary effort when a fielder fails in an attempt to retire a preceding runner and in the scores judgment the batter runner could have been retired at the first base when a batter runner reaches first base safely as a result of preceding runner being called out for interfering with a batted ball or a defensive player. Section 4. Sacrifice fly balls. A sacrifice fly ball is scored when with less than two outs. The batter scores a runner with a fly ball which is caused or the ball or the line drive handled by an outfielder or an infielder running in the outfield is dropped and runner scores and in the scores judgment the runner could have scored after the catch had the fly ball had been caught section 5 runs batted in a run batted in a run scored because of one of the following reason a safe hit a safe a sacrifice band or slap hit for fp or sacrifice fly for fp and sp a foul fly a foul fly cost an infield put out or fielder's choice a runner forced home because of obstruction, the batter being hit with a pitch ball or being given a base on balls, a home run and all runs scored as a result. Section 6, Pitcher credited with a win. A pitcher should, shall be credited with a win in the following situation. When he is the starting pitcher and has pitched at least 4 innings and his team was not only in the lead when he is replaced by remains in the lead for the remainder of the game, when game has ended after five innings of play and starting pitcher has pitched at least three innings and his team scores more runs than the other team when the game is terminated. Section 7. The pitcher charged with a loss. A pitcher shall be charged with a loss regardless of the number of innings he has pitched. If he is replaced when his team is behind in the score and his team thereafter fails to tie the score or gain the lead. Section 8, Game Summary The summary shall be list the following items in this order. The score by innings and the final score. The runs batted and in and by whom hit. Two base hits and by whom hit. The three base hits and by whom hit. Um, home runs and by whom hit. Sacrifice flies and by whom hit. 
double plays and players participating in them, triple plays and, particip and players participating in them, number of walks given by each pitcher, number of batters struck out by each pitcher, number of hits and runs allowed by each pitcher, the name of the winning pitcher, the name of the losing pitcher, the time of the game, the names of the umpires and scores for FP, stolen, bases, and by who, sacrifice bands, the names of batters hit by pitch ball, and the pitcher who hit them, the number of wild pitches made by each pitcher, and the number of pass balls made by each pitcher. Section 9, Stolen Bases For FP, stolen bases are credited a runner to a runner whenever he advances one base unaided by a hit, a put out, an error, a force out, a fearless choice, a pass ball, a wild pitch, or an illegal pitch. This includes the batter runner advancing the second on an awarded base on ball. Section 10, Records of Forfeited Games All records of a forfeited game shall be included in the official record except that of a pitcher's win features one lost record so that's it that it that are uh, those are um the rules of softball game from rule one to rule 12 and i hope you have learned a lot from me as i have um, reported to you the different rules of the softball game so that's it thank you for watching and stay safe and god bless